Welcome back to the big one. Uh, the minority in parliament has presented what it calls the true state of the nation. The minority leader, Harun Idrisu, described the president's presentation as a campaign platform message full of untruths. Those of you who listened to the president would have been wondering whether he was still on a party platform campaigning for vote or he was now the elected president of the republic who was speaking as the head of state of the republic of uh, ghana but we are not surprised and we we're not perturbed because he himself said that Ghanaians should anticipate tough measures to end their many sufferings that they promised in the mpp uh, manifesto many of you who heard him again indicated that he there is no fiscal space, yet he did not provide an opportunity and an explanation to the Ghanaian people how he intends to find the fiscal space. It is also to be noted that many other sectors of the economy were left out. Even Bimbila has no comment on it, even as it poses a major threat to our national peace and uh, security and what he is seeking to do as president of the republic. It's also important that I state that it is not enough for the president of the republic just to come to parliament and he says to condemn the continuous intimidation, harassment of public servants. Therefore, let me say here and now that President Akufuado stands on this act of lawlessness is most disappointing, especially as he touts himself as a champion of human rights and someone who upholds fundamental freedoms. We note the total absence of any acknowledgement of positives that the new administration may have taken over, including a few examples. Ali, we are aware that he has not introduced any tax instrument in the Republic but he managed to get $30 million to pay the armed forces. It certainly meant that something good and something well was being inherited by him by the previous administration. The silence on the fact that the current government would not have to look for $750 million this year to redeem the 2007 bond that it issued without a plan of its payoff is also significant. On the IMF program itself, we find it curious that President Nana Dudankwa did not repeat his emphatic statement on the campaign platform that he will review the program because it was inimical to our nation's interest. Let the President and the MPP be reminded that those wanting free senior high school is not only the people entering in September, but every Ghanaian student in a senior high school deserves deserves to benefit from the free senior high school on equity principles and therefore they should come with a budget even as they contemplated heritage for how long how sustainable was that if you have a president who is crying that i have no fiscal space yet he is accommodating new presidential initiative that is promising to finance who has bastardized borrowing to as an option so you see he will be between the deep sea he cannot borrow he wants to cut taxes he has no fiscal space the end of his contradiction right uh, so i have in the studio ibrahim aj who is with the office of the executive secretary to the president and a member of the new patriotic party good evening sir good nice evening. to have you here. likewise Stephen. yes uh, so uh the minority is saying that well i mean the president's presentation full of half truths mm -hmm. and untruths uh, i need your reaction to that that a lot of the facts that the president put forward mm -hmm. the minority says are uh distorted mm -hmm. or they are untruths or totally uh, not the representation of the facts on the ground. Well, thank the you, Stephen. Uh, good ground. evening to our viewers mm -hmm. on TV3. Um, I mean, what is untrue about the state of our economy? The fact that, indeed, we owe, in terms of debt-wise, 122 billion Ghana cities. What is untrue about the state of education right now? Mm. What is untrue about the fact that energy, electricity, costs more than your rent? What is untrue about the state of our national health service. I'm talking about the NHIS. What is untrue about the fact that a lot of the service providers want to opt out because the erstwhile government of President John Dramani Mahama was not paying them. And I think what President Akufuadu did 
was to highlight these key uh, uh, areas and of you, our state of You wouldn't say these are untruths Every, at all everything or half-truths. Everything there is the wholesome truth. The wholesome truth. I'll give you one uh, quick example that they wanted to... Uh, to, I'm talking about the minority mm, now minority wanted to, uh, to latch on. They're talking about the fact that um, the uh, IMF targets, they said that uh, they didn't miss them, but where they missed them was because of extenuating circumstances. For example, they say that what President Kufuado should have done was to highlight the fact that because of the pr uh, drop in oil price, that's why they missed certain economic targets. But Stephen, here's the thing. We are a net importer of oil. So when oil drops from $122 per barrel, I'm talking Brent sweet crude. That's supposed to be beneficial to us. To $28. But we also export. But of course. And but so revenue accrued from exports will, will be lower. Sure, but you see, budget estimations are based upon a whole uh, a slew of, of, of economic indicators. Mm -hmm. Oil revenue is one. Cocoa production, agriculture uh, is, is another. And then, of course, you, you have um, the financial uh, services area as well um, and an industry itself. You look at all those factors in terms of your revenue. Oil, in fact, is not a major contributor. We have gold as well, as you know. But it, the fact is we, ex we import more. And look at the quantum from $122 a barrel to at one point in October 2015, leading to uh, 2016, $28 a barrel. That was a, a huge financial gain for us, which means we don't spend so much money importing oil, because now the price has dropped, giving us that fiscal space. So how do you then continue to miss the budgets? I'm talking about the IMF. Mm -hmm. And what President Kufuado did was explain it very succinctly to the point so that everybody understood. And you don't think state. that in explaining, he possibly may have put himself in that quoting code, campaign mode. That's what the minority is saying. You don't see it that way? No, there's no campaign mode. I mean, President Akufaro made the point that he wasn't elected to complain, mm. but to actually fix the problems. And he highlighted certain interventions to actually bring Ghana back on track. In order to transform our economy, we have to transform our human resource base, which means education. For, I mean, the NDC said it wasn't possible, free SHS, not for 20 years. They somehow backtracked, 180 degree turn, and their intervention, what they called free, was a 37 Ghana city subvention. I mean, that's the, the price of your trotro from your home to the school. <laughs> that's that's the, uh, in, the in, intervention of free SHS under President John Dramani Mohammed, the former president. What President Kufuado has done, has highlighted, we've costed it about 1.6 million to 1.7 million Ghanaian students who will now enter the 2017-2018 academic year at a cost of around 3.6 billion Ghana cities. It's being costed for. And so you know that we're on the path to actually transforming our economy through the key or the basic factor which is our education and the next generation of Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. So these are the interventions that will help to transform our economy and make us the most business-friendly, people-friendly economy within Africa. And it's, a, it's, it's, it's an economy that is inclusive. When you look at what President Akufuado mentioned within the State of the Nation Address, talking about the one district, one factory, what that does, in fact, it's across. We have 216 factories, and they're not all, 216 districts, sorry. And all the districts are not located in Accra, uh, Greater Accra. Great Accra has something in the region around, I think, 16 or so districts. Great Accra. And so you're looking at the whole nation being uh, given a, 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 an economic injection, if you will, that will create that economic space and vitality. And when everybody uh, is in gainful employment, you'll see how the economy will expand and then you, uh, you, you, the, the dividends that will come from it. Uh, in terms of that expansion. Mm. But while, while, while saying that, let's go back to some of the concerns the NDC raised in this uh, press conference, which is the key uh, reasons we're here. Uh, they say that the president did not make reference to some of their government's good work. Mm. Uh, for example, the Takrady to Paga railway line, mm. they say, was uh, a project that was initiated under the previous government. 
Is this not a concern that even if it was the MPP, I'm sure you would raise uh, questions about why they, they take a, a something you've started and you don't give credit to, to it? I, I, think I mean, for example, the Pokrasi interchange construction is to be started this year, uh, September. And we're mm. told that a $95 million or so uh, contract has been awarded. Now, mm. this was done in the previous government, but no mention. Uh, has been made anywhere of well, uh, with, the role played by the previous well, government. With all due respect, um, I think what President Kufuadu did, he highlighted indeed President Mahama's role in the transition. And he said that his uh, demeanor was a, a credit to our nation. And so the credit has been given. But on the specifics you're talking mm -hmm. about, this is a state of the nation address by His Excellency President. It's not supposed to have everything. No, it, you can't capture everything. Uh, what you want within that within the lim limited space you have you need to give out a, a clear idea of where we are as a country looking at the key pillars and we're talking about energy uh, the economy uh, health uh, housing sanitation those areas um, ed ed education as well but I think one key thing that President Kufuadu did which if you will is a, a slight departure from other state of the nation address is talking about discipline once we get the attitude right, now somebody may, may say, oh, but what's the, st the state of the nation? I think about timeliness. Mm -hmm. He said that he'll, he'll, uh, punctuality. Yeah. All of these things inure to transforming the society that we want. We, we want to be ambassadors of excellence. And you don't think that the president was hiding behind uh, brevity in order to avoid touching on critical issues uh, that affect the Aruna, generality of government? Honorable Aruna Drissu mentioned, used that word brevity. Uh, you can be brief, but I'd rather be succinct. And to the point, and that's what President Kufuado did. Right. You mentioned the Pokwasi interchange. The sword for that has not been cut. They also mentioned in their press conference about the flower pot to Tema um, uh, flyover. Mm. Uh, and there. Again, that has not started. What we're looking at are the key tangibles. And what Guyanese want to know is that over the last 12 months specifically, from the last State of the Nation address, how have we got to where we are? That's what concerns Ghana. Right. And having outlined that, President Kufuado went on to explain his vision about how we're going to get where we need, where to, be we need to go. As Mr. Brian Maji, I'm afraid that we don't have a lot of time, but we're grateful that you passed through, and I'm sure that we have a lot more uh, time on our hands some other day to uh, expand on some of these issues. Uh, thanks very much for coming. Uh, this is still News at 10, and we're live from the News Hub. You can also follow us on our Facebook page. We're streaming live also at 3news.com.